So good evening, good evening, good evening. Lobster Lee is back again. And uh, yes, it does sting a little bit. Uh, big up to everybody inside, man. Make sure you are smashing the like button. Uh, less than 300 to 80,000 subscribers. Get this done by this weekend. That would be fantastic. Road to 100K is fully on. Um, big up to everybody inside, though, man. Make sure you're sharing the content around. Like the thing, subscribe to the thing, all of that good stuff. Uh, but we do have a big game tomorrow. Um, well, I say big game. It's only a big game if Man City lose or draw to Leeds today. Otherwise, it ain't really a big game, is it? Let's be real. Uh, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot in that four-game without a win streak. Uh, but the manager has done his press conference uh, ahead of the game. Um, the media gathered at London Colney to hear from Mikel in his pre-match press conference. Um, the boss discussed numerous topics around the game, including injury updates on Gabriel and William Saliba, his impressions on the Magpies this season, and how he feels the title race is shaping up. <laughs> oh, dear. On Gabriel's fitness, he said, we'll have to see tomorrow. This was obviously done yesterday, people. So that, I mean, today they'll have to see. Uh, but he could not finish the game against Chelsea. So it was obviously a big sign for us. We'll have to see how he is. I don't think he's going to make it. Uh, he dropped down on the floor four times before finally coming off. I don't think we're seeing him. Um, but don't worry. We have the next best thing. We have Kivior. Apparently, he's amazing now. Uh, on whether there has been any progress on William Saliba's injury, he said not a lot of progress. He's feeling better every day, but still not been able to uh, have any activity around the first team, so we don't expect him to be with us. Do you know what? With that, why didn't he just say he's out for the season? Instead of trying to con everyone that he's going to make it and he could be making it and he might make it, we all knew he was out for the season. Um, on whether he is out for the season, we're not there yet. Uh, because we're always hopeful that the players are always pushing to play. And if that's the case, we'll announce that. Hopefully, it will not be the case. You won't, I will, yeah. Uh, I want this to be done to solve Saliba's back issue. It's about the healing process. Process, we have to take a shot of coffee. But we have to build his capacity again to have the right impact, the right load, and be in a good condition to train and play for us. What does that even mean? We have to build his capacity and the right impact, the right load. They didn't have to dramatize these things, didn't they? Um, are there any other injury doubts? He said, hopefully not. How important the Chelsea win was for us? He said, we showed a great response in the week. Did we? We were great for about half an hour, Mikel. And then we decided to stop playing. I don't think that was a great response. They were there for the taking for about a 6-0. It's what it is. Um... But the most important thing was to pull it out on the pitch, and we did that. Right from the beginning, we showed real determination and desire to win the game and put in a big performance. It was a big game for us. It was a London derby, and we earned the right to win the game. On, finding, uh, on needing to find a ruthless streak, he said, we need to find moments that are crucial to kill the games, um, find better ways to finalise games. We've had a few, especially with the games that we have drawn, which have ultimately cost us a title. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, we're ahead of schedule. Charles Watts told us. Oh, by the way, Charles Watts' book is out. Um, the Mikel Arteta book. Anyone copped that yet? Anybody got that book? Anyone ordered that? Has anybody ordered the book that Charles Watts, who's supposedly working on behalf of the fans as a journalist, that's what they're supposed to be doing, um, asking questions that the fans want the answers to, has now written Mikel Arteta's book. Yeah, if there's any more proof needed, <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, on whether the injuries have been because the season had been extended. Like, do me a favour. Is this actually a question? Uh, the ones that we've had probably with the ex uh, exception of Saliba, which was a really nasty impact, have been more traumatic than anything else. We wouldn't put that down to the World Cup or the amount of stress of games we have to play. I wouldn't say it's that good. I don't want to hear no excuses for that. On how much the players need to forget about last season's Newcastle game. Um, well, you've just brought it up, whoever asked that question. Goody. Uh, it's a very difficult game. Um, it was a year ago with different players, a different game, but we'll have to play much better than we did last year for sure. We know that it is going to be a really tough game because especially at home, they have been really good. Now, they have been very good. Uh, on whether the reverse fixture was one of our toughest this season. He said, we've had a few, but that game, uh, that was a game we deserved to win. Well, we didn't because Eddie and Ketty had really the only chance. 
Um, we didn't in the end, but they're a really good side and they're well coached and have really good players and the right environment around the club. They're in a good place. Uh, he was asked about Big Sam's return um, and having role models in coaching. He said, I've learned a lot, learned a lot from the coaches. Certainly, I've learned things from Sam because I played against him when I was a player. He has a really unique and very effective way of playing and getting results with his teams, especially for foreign coaches and young coaches. You come into the league and you have coaches that have kept the essence of English football in many ways. And I think Sam's a part of that. So basically he's saying, you play Brexit ball. <laughs> he's just dressed it out to make it sound sexy. Right, and how different the team is from the one that drew with Newcastle in January. He said, we'll try to play the game the way we want. And it's a very different game for sure. Uh, that was a battle when we played them at the Emirates. And I think we deserve to win the game. There are things that are obviously going to be different from the last game. We're going to have to be better to earn the right to win. And whether the team is better at dealing with Newcastle's approach now, he said, we'll have to show that on the pitch. Coping with our recent defensive changes, he said, we can't control certain things. We have to accept what it is. And um, the other players have to fulfill these roles. Uh, we try to keep them and support them as much as possible. Don't look for too many excuses. Just find the solution to win the game. Did you, did you hear that, Top Gooners? Try not to look for excuses, yeah? Cool. I'm having to wait and hope for Manchester City to slip up. He said, we have enough to deal with just looking after what we have to do and playing well to win the games. And whether Sunday's game is an opportunity to make a statement. <laughs> we don't have to make a statement to anybody, he said. Wow, okay. We have to play our best game and play as well as we possibly can. So earn the right to win the game. That's today's buzz phrase. Earn the right to win the game. How many times has he said that already? Mad. Whether he expects Newcastle to come flying out the blocks, he said, I don't know what they have prepared. Uh, well, I'd hope, I'd hope you actually do know what they've prepared, Mikel. Um, and whether the traditional big six will now become a big seven, including Newcastle. Right, let me just put this big, big six myth to bed. English football is the only country that have this big six and top four no other country dramatizes this rubbish yeah and it, all it is is the media companies and the football clubs just coining it in off of the back of dramatizing mediocrity about big six and big seven what is what's it going to be next big 10 do me a favor yeah there's one winner that's it um anyway he said they're already third in the league now they're there on merit and the way they have performed and the amount of changes they have made They've made some very intelligent decisions as well. They deserve to be where they are. Well, Martin Odegaard's goals coming from late runs in the box. <laughs> that's something our attacking midfielders have the ability to do. And that's why we play in a certain way to exploit the spaces. Martin has the capacity uh, to do that. And he's finding himself in those positions and being very effective in the final actions. <laughs> in the final actions. It's something very important to us. Okay, so basically what that means is attacking midfielder doing his job. Well done. It's not rocket science, is it? Make runs in the box, shoot, you score. Wow. Uh, anyway, on whether that is something that is being worked on in training. There you go. They're trying to make out the managers doing this and it's revolutionary. Uh, it's about what we want in that position and what we are capable of doing all the time we have to adapt to the quality of our players but as well try to inspire them to go a bit further that is what we've been doing to explore all the things that can be incredibly important to us for the team to help us win more games uh, there's always he's always been open and working hard to achieve that all the time on whether man city will feel the pressure he said i don't know what's going to happen uh, they have a lot of games in the last few months and they continue to do so and they will deserve to win the league if they continue uh, if they don't then we have to be ready winning our games to be there and whether there were examples of them feeling the pressure when he was at city he said it's more down to the players i don't know what they're thinking right now or what their focus is they try to win every game uh, we try to do the same and we'll see what happens what a stupid lump like a couple of questions um and whether he can use last season's defeat to Newcastle as extra motivation. Oh, here we go. Redemption. <laughs> I don't think so. Thank you, Mikhail. Cheers. 
there is not a lot to motivate from there. Uh, there are a lot of things that we have to do much better and uh, better than we did on that day. It's a different group of players as well to the group that were playing up there last year. What a load of rubbish that press conference was. Uh, let's have a little look and see what else we've got going on here. Now, let's see what Eddie Howe said. Has Eddie Howe said anything? Sometimes they do the they do the opposition manager one. Can't find it. I can't find it, pal. Um, obviously, the greatest Premier League goal in living history was scored by a proper number 10, by the way, Dennis Bergkamp. A proper number 10. I'm supposed to rate your Gibraltar card. I've seen Dennis Bergkamp, mate. Nah. Um, anyway, let's see what else we've got going on. Anything else on here? I don't think there is. I think that's it. Um, see if Arsenal have done a little preview. No, they've done inside training. Not that we want to watch that. Um, no, that's about it, really. So we might as well wrap it up then, people. Um, five classic wins at Newcastle, 1996. Um, we won 2 1. Ian Wright with the winner. Um, 2002, 2-0 two against Newcastle. Dennis Bergkamp with the greatest goal you'll ever see. Uh, what else have we got? Um, 2009, we've beaten 3-1. We've beaten 4-0 in 2010. Bentner and Walcott. Uh, 2013, Lauren Koscielny. Ah, yes, that was the ghost goal, wasn't it? The ghost goal at Newcastle. <laughs> anyway, listen, I do uh, I do think this game is going to be extremely difficult, and I genuinely don't see us winning it. Uh, Newcastle are well-drilled. They're, they're flying on confidence. They're bagging goals for fun. And we know that when the pressure's on Arsenal, they fold. So I don't think we're beating Newcastle tomorrow. Maybe a draw at best. It would not surprise me one bit if we got took apart tomorrow, especially if Rob Holding and Kivio are at centre-back. So... Yeah, sadly, I do think the season's dusted. Um, Premier League table, as it stands, Man City are one point ahead. If they beat Leeds today, which I probably expect them to, let's be real, even with a new manager, they're going to pan Leeds. Yeah, that could be about 5 or 6-0, I'd imagine. Um, they'll go four points clear. Four points clear, and they would have played their game in hand. So when we go into that game tomorrow, we will then be playing in front of them. So... Yeah, it's all these people that want to sit there and try and make out, oh, we're playing after them. Well, we're not, are we? Yeah, because they're a game behind. They're one point ahead. They're a game behind. Their goal difference is, what, plus 15? They've suddenly spun that around because it was plus seven the other day. So, yeah, I think it's over, people. I think it's over, sadly. But it is what it is. Uh, we're ahead of schedule. Uh, we're in phase three. Charlie Boy Watts told us. Of course he did. He wanted to keep the book deal. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on all of that. Um, I will be dropping a video on the second channel, so keep your eyes peeled for that. That'll be out literally 20 minutes after this comes out. So keep your eyes peeled for that as well. And um, yeah, I'm going to the beach. Adios amigos. Ciao.